G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. So I've got a very quick demonstration of a package in Dynamo called Monocle, um, which as you'll see is sort of like a custom package and sort of like a view extension. It, I'm finding it's really essential and handy um, for streamlining how I work in Dynamo, so hopefully it'll help you as well. So Monocle is built actually by someone that a lot of you probably already are aware of um, called John Pearson. If you're not aware of him, um, definitely follow him at 60 Second Revit on Twitter. Um, he's definitely on the forefront of developing some really interesting innovations on Dynamo, as well as also maintaining such packages as Rhythm, Bang, and Duct Tape. Um, I haven't seen Duct Tape myself, but I have used Rhythm and Bang um, quite a lot. And he also makes some interesting sort of humorous tools um, such as Dynathanos, where it essentially takes out half the nodes in a Dynamo script. <laughs> Obviously, for people that know Thanos in the Marvel uh, Universe, you'll know why that happens. Um, but definitely check out his work um, and follow him and see what he's doing if you're into Dynamo. Um, I'm finding I get a lot of value out of what I get from John's work. Um, so Monocle is essentially a custom package um, in the way that you install it and manage it, uh, but it does provide many what I would call view extensions. So it enhances the way that Dynamo can be used and interacted with. Um, it just has a lot of quality of life improvements as well. I find that I use it without even realizing I'm using it sometimes. It feels so embedded into Dynamo when I have it installed. It also allows you to identify custom nodes really easily, which is a really common issue um, until very recently in Dynamo. For those that are using Dynamo in later versions, you will know that there is a view extension manager that manages custom packages. I still find that I use the tools in Monocle quite a lot as well. And it's got a really good sense of humor um, embedded, so I will try to sort of show some of John's sense of humor that he's embedded into this package, because there's a lot of um, good quality memes in there. <laughs> but why might you use Monocle? So you might use it to improve your productivity. Um, you will find there are little shortcuts and standardization techniques in here that might help you improve the way that you use Dynamo or encourage, encourage good habits out of other people that use Dynamo, such as documenting your custom nodes or grouping things with specific color conventions, which are things that this package supports. It also just makes Dynamo more fun for new users. So it has a lot of memes and jokes in there, and that can sort of bridge the gap between the intimidating aspect of looking at a piece of code or a script and sort of relating it back to humor and more relaxing techniques um, that make Dynamo more fun. And it, it allows you to stay on top of your custom packages and clearly communicate to your users where nodes have come from as well. But you can download it from the package manager. Um, I believe it works in a majority of the supported Dynamo versions at the moment. At the very least, it definitely works in Revit 2020 and Revit 2021. Um, one thing that John does with all his packages is he tries to make them as supportable for different builds of Dynamo as possible, which is really impressive. Um, having built custom packages myself, I, I can really appreciate how hard that, that must be. Um, and I, I myself barely have time to do it with my own package as it is. Um, but anyway, let's actually explore Monocle. I'm going to show you what it can do and just some of the features that you might find useful um, in the package. So I'm just going to open up Revit 2020. Um, I just have the, the good old um, Revit basic sample project open at the moment in the background. Um, so everyone knows this lovely little, little house. Um, so what we're just going to do is just make a new Dynamo script. So I already have Monocle installed as a package. Um, the first thing you'll notice if you install Monocle is that it doesn't show up in your package manager. Um, it does show up in the actual, I guess, background package manager here as a, as a custom package. Noting that I'm working with 2020.6.1 at the moment, um, but you will notice some little things appear on your ribbon, such as some alignment tools for nodes and also some, some orientation tools. So let's just uh, collect a few elements from the Revit model. So I'm just gonna get a categories node. And I'm just gonna get like all the walls just so we can see some geometry in this case. So I'm just gonna get the wall category. And let's just get all elements of category. Whoops, all elements of category, come on. One tool that might actually be really good to show off right now actually is the, um, the searching tool in Monocle. I might just use this instead of searching this way. Um, perfect use case. <laughs> if you go to this little tab in Monocle, these are essentially all the things that Monocle can give you in addition. Um, there's also some right click sort of context sensitive things we'll show as well. Um, the first thing I'll show you is just the about screen because if you do have a good sense of humor, um, which hopefully you do, um, you may recognize uh, this from, this is Spinal Tap, the movie. Um, but essentially turning Dynamo up to 11 is John's joke. So adding some features and really pushing the capability. But you will find little Easter eggs hidden in, in, in Monocore like this. I mean, obviously you've got 
some memes in the, in the logo itself, but you will find some funny things like this. Um, let's just open up a really great tool, which is called Simple Search. So this is essentially an advanced searching tool. Um, I guess advanced makes it sound more complicated than it is, but essentially this solves searching for elements much more easily. If I just look for um, all elements, uh, in this case, I may need to use the node description as well. So I can really easily find like all elements of category or type, and I can really easily get also custom nodes as well. So you can see sometimes that can be a really easy way to see custom nodes or just nodes in general versus the search tool, where you sometimes don't see as many as you need, or you might not always get the matches that you need. A really good example of a node that's really hard to find um, is the element get parameter value name. I might just click on this and just place it on the canvas. So obviously you place it just by clicking on them. Um, but sometimes when you're looking for the get parameter value by name node, I found it's very hard to find. So if I look for parameter value, in this case, I don't get the default get parameter value by name in my list, um, which is a little bit frustrating. The only way that I've found you can find it is by going element dot get parameter value by name. So it's quite, quite difficult to sometimes get these particular particular elements. And sometimes they're quite far down the list as well. Um, so if, in this case, if I just look for uh, get parameter, I think gives a match in this case. And I can see I can really quickly find get parameter value by name just by looking for a few keywords. So for a new user using Dynamo that doesn't know how to sort of trick the search tool into giving you what you want, this can be a much easier way. And obviously it's always available so you can dock it off to the side and you don't have to rely as much on right clicking and searching. Um, a great thing about this too is obviously when you go to search for something, if you click outside, your search is gone. So sometimes this can be great to sort of hold a selection. So if you're searching for a few particular nodes and you just want to keep placing a few, this can really streamline um, how long it takes to do that. So I think that this is a great a great way to navigate the nodes in Dynamo and a much needed feature. So um, great to see John, John built that. Um, as well as this, we're just going to go and collect some element geometry just to show you the, um, the view cube tools. So in this case, I'm just going to element geometry. You can see, obviously, I'm not too used to using simple search, so that's why I'm not, not using it too, too often, but I find that I will probably use this more in future. And we can see now that we can just really quickly line up our view. We can go to the bottom, we can go to the top, and you can see it's really easy to navigate around. Uh, and this is obviously something that Dynamo, you know, by default isn't, isn't able to do. Um, so pretty powerful when you're just trying to explore a geometry-based uh, Dynamo environment. And you can see you don't have to toggle between between these environments in order to, to set up those views. Um, so really cool. Um, as well as that, we'll just explore a few more features. Um, so we've got the in, in canvas alignment widget, as they call it. Um, so this isn't actually this little ribbon here. This is actually a context sensitive tool. When you select nodes, you can see that we get this little, little set that comes up and we have a few features we can see. So if we just select all of these, we firstly have these alignment tools. Now let's say my nodes are all, all over the place. We actually have some options where we can we can line up our nodes just by clicking on these. And you can see it's really quick and easy. Um, some alignment methods don't always make sense, such as align left. They all obviously go on top of each other. Um, so sometimes you do have to be careful sort of how you how you align your nodes. It works in some cases, obviously, if I do align left now, they're all on top of each other. But I find that I am really frequently using uh, this, this alignment method in this case. And you can also access them just through here as well. And there are some more interesting ways to align as well such as spacing them out. Um, in this case, you can sort of evenly space them in both directions, which I find really handy. Um, you can line them all up, or you can, in this case, put them to the top, put them to the bottom. Um, but having this on, on hand is just super useful. It feels like it should just be a feature that comes with Dynamo by default. And a lot of the features in Monocle just feel that way. It's sort of like a why isn't this just built in already? Um, as well as this, you have this little eyedropper tool. And this allows you to set some groups um, really quickly based on some, some presets. So if you go to Monocle and you go to custom colored grouping, you can actually set up a, a, a numbering, a naming and a coloring standard. Um, so this is really common in companies. Uh, this is a really good standard here. I quite like it. Um, I think I've changed the background color. I think by default, that's like a, a green or something like that. Um, but by default, they come together and you can just set them, the names and the colors to whatever your company uses. And then you can really quickly just select them and group them and they get named automatically. So that can be a real time saver um, when you're trying to just set up elements and groups. So rather than having to do the usual right click, create, create group, set a color, change the name, it, it obviously saves you a little bit of time. I find that I usually have my custom grouping open when I'm working in Dynamo, um, when I'm developing scripts. So I think this is a really great tool um, just to work. And you can obviously really quickly group things too, just by selecting 
hitting the group and that, but that also sort of, sort of shortcuts you from having to select the eyedropper in the corner. Um, but I almost feel like this just becomes natural in Dynamo eventually, this interface. I'm so used to seeing it now that I almost forget that it's in Monocle. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Let's um, just have a look at some of the custom node features as well. So I'm just gonna get a few custom nodes from some packages. Let's just get one from Clockwork and let's get one from Biomorph nodes. Notice I'm, I'm getting nodes from pretty commonly used custom packages here. So I'm trying to make sure they're they're relatively well-known packages because I do find that some of these features don't work for the lesser known packages. Um, let's get one. So I'm getting a few that activate by default and I'm getting some that are inactive by default. And you can notice immediately that my custom nodes are overriding. Notice that this head has gone blue and it's got white text. Um, whereas if I have just a default node that comes with Dynamo, it stays the same. So this is because in this case, um, we've got a, an extension active in Monocle. In this case, the custom node differentiator, TM, <laughs> trademark. <laughs> so in this case, if you do disable it, it just goes back to normal. But if you do enable it, you can see it's really obvious what custom nodes are being used or what are custom nodes on your canvas. I find this is really helpful as well. Um, again, I usually just have this open by default. I have, I've submitted a request just to maybe give the user the control to change these colors because I do find the inactive nodes a little bit hard to read. Um, but this is brilliant. Like this, this makes perfect sense that I'm using custom nodes. For anyone that's used a package called Iris before, you will have seen how you can do this yourself, but it takes a little bit more time. Having it just available automatically is, is really useful. I'm just gonna disable it for now. Um, another great thing you can do is just use this tool called the custom the, the custom package usage dog. Um, this is the first thing I used in Monocle and it's probably what it's best known for. It's just essentially a little tool that firstly tells you what packages are in use. So I can see just a list of all the custom packages I need to actually run uh, this script, which is really handy. Um, we do have a view extension now um, available. I think it might be in, yeah, this, this here, show graph package dependency. This also shows you what packages are in use. Um, that you need to run the script. And if you don't have one of them, it'll highlight in red. Um, but this was around before that, and I still find that I use this as well. You can send the package usage to clipboard and then just paste it. So that's really handy and it gives you the versions as well. Um, probably the, the main thing I use it for is just to annotate custom nodes. And that will give you a little node above all your custom nodes. Um, I use this in most of my scripts that I put onto GitHub so that users can see what packages they will need to install in order to run the scripts that I that I share. And you can obviously clear all the custom notes as well. So it's really impressive, just this little tool on its own is probably enough to warrant the use of Monocle in the first place. As well as that, um, there's also the ability to add sticky notes. So that can be quite handy just to add something that you use, the user can easily spot. So it could be like instructions on how to run the scripts. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I think they, they might change orientation. Yeah, it seems like the orientation is like semi-randomized. I assume it's running on a fixed randomization seed because it seems like it always sort of comes in the same the same order from the first one and you can just get rid of them by crossing them out too. So that's pretty cool. Um, as well as that, uh, probably the last thing I'll show that's pretty pretty funny um, is that there's, there's Clippy. <laughs> so if anyone's ever used a Microsoft Word um, or just Microsoft programs, you will recognize this guy. It's been a while since I've seen him personally. Um, but you can literally just add Clippy to your canvas and you can click on him to animate him, of course, which is pretty funny. Um, but if you do select the common package, um, sometimes it should find which package it's from. Now, some of them don't seem to get picked up, and in that case, you know, it just says go and ask Jeeves, which I guess we probably would have done the last time we used Clippy. <laughs> but you can see some of the common custom packages. It does tell you what they are. You can also just right-click on them, and you'll have this extra little setting called Lookup Node Source from Monocle. And we can just see that this comes from the Rhythm package. So that can be really helpful for a user trying to identify where something has come from specifically. Um, you could use the package dog. I find that that's a little bit more reliable and it will pick up pretty much every node from a package. Uh, but I find that sometimes it won't pick up every, every custom package. Um, you can see that it's at least picking up Biomorph, Clockwork and Rhythm. In this case, it doesn't seem to identify the Orchid node. Um, it may have something to do with the way the package is installed. I have noticed if packages are remotely installed and not via the package manager, it doesn't find a match. Uh, but I can obviously just go to the package usage dog and just annotate my custom nodes. Or I can use the, um, the, the view graph package dependency as well. Um, but yeah, some of these features, they just feel so natural once you install the, the program. Um, so I definitely do recommend that you, you try this out and see if it works for you or your users, or it makes Dynamo just that little bit more fun. You can just get rid of Clippy by right clicking him and he'll just cycle off into the distance, I think. Yeah, there he goes. So really impressive and I look forward to seeing how it develops in the future. Um, definitely head over to John Pearson's GitHub. Um, he does have a GitHub where he manages um, the issues 
for this tool. I'll put it in the link of the video. Um, it, it, he takes on any issues and requests and ideas. Um, I've been feeding some through to him and he's really receptive to, to the ideas. Um, not all of them obviously will be you know integrated depending what they are, but I think it's great that he really listens to the people that use his package. And um, yeah, just like to thank him personally for all the hard work that he does um, for Dynamo as well. So definitely check him out on Twitter and see what he's doing. He likes to share updates on Twitter for this tool as well. So yeah, definitely worth following. So thanks for watching today. Um, I hope this gives you something new and fun that you can use in Dynamo um, just to sort of brighten up your day that little bit more and also improve your efficiency. If you're not already following and subscribing um, the channel, then feel free to do so. I usually make two videos a week and hope to do so for a while. And um, I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.